the new engine arrived. What's your name? asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck round. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. <laughs> Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross. Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly, he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behaviour. Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a great western engine. We do our work without fuss, but begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these um, engines that we only take orders from you. Silence! Snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. As for you, thundered the fat controller, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so, easily. A large hopper was loading his trucks full of coal. Thomas was still being cheeky. Careful, he warned. Watch out with those silly trucks. Go on, go on, go on, muttered the truck. And by the way, went on Thomas, those buffers don't look very safe to me. The last load poured down. Help, I'm choking, cried Thomas. Get me out. Percy was worried, but he couldn't help laughing. Thomas's smart blue paint was covered in coal dust from smoke box to bunker. <laughs> Chuckled Percy. You don't look really useful now, Thomas. You look really disgraceful. I'm not disgraceful, choked Thomas. You did that on purpose. Get me out. It took so long to clean Thomas that he wasn't in time for his next train. Toby had to take Annie and Clarabelle. Poor Thomas, whispered Annie to Clarabelle. They were most upset. Thomas was grumpy in the shed that night. Toby thought it a great joke. But Percy was cross with Thomas for thinking he had made his paint dirty on purpose. Fancy a really useful blue engine like Thomas becoming a disgrace to the fat controller's railway. Next day, Thomas was feeling more cheerful as he watched Percy bring his trucks from the junction. The trucks were heavy and Percy was tired. Have a drink, said his driver, then you'll feel better. 
The water column stood at the end of the siding with the unsafe buffers. Suddenly, Percy found that he couldn't stop. The buffers didn't stop him either. Oh, wailed Percy, help! The buffers were broken and Percy was wheel deep in coal. It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. Now Percy has learned his lesson too, he chuckled to himself. That night, the two engines made up their quarrel. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Oh, said Gordon, it's only a cow. Joe, Joe. He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off, be off. Moo, said the cow. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's guard told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, ready to go to market. Percy will take it along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word, keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stop so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Stop, stop, I've got Thomas's passengers, wailed Bertie, roaring up to the gates. It was no good, Edward was gone. Bother, said Bertie. Bother Thomas's fireman not coming to work today. Why did I promise to help the passengers catch the train? That will do, Bertie, said his driver. A promise is a promise and we must keep it. I'll catch Edward or bus, said Bertie. Oh, my gears and axles, he groaned, toiling up the hill. I'll never be the same bus again. Hooray, hooray, I see him, cheered Bertie as he reached the top. Oh, no, Edward's at the station. No, he stopped at a crossing. Hooray, hooray, Bertie tore down the hill. Well done, Bertie, shouted his passengers. Go it. Bertie skidded into the yard. Wait, wait, cried Bertie. He was just in time to see Edward puff away. I'm sorry, said Bertie. Never mind, said the passengers. After him quickly. Third time lucky, you know. Do you think we'll catch him at the next station, driver? There's a good chance, replied the driver. Our road keeps close to the line and we can climb hills better than Edward. 
I'll just make sure. He spoke to the station master. Bertie and the passengers waited impatiently. Yes, we'll do it this time, said the driver. Hooray, called the passengers, as Bertie chased after Edward once more. This hill is too steep, this hill is too steep, grumbled the coaches as Edward snorted in front. They reached the top at last and ran smoothly into the station. Peep, peep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. The guard blew the whistle and Edward's driver looked back. But the flag didn't wave. Then he heard Bertie. Everything seemed to happen at once. And the station master told the guard and driver what had happened. I'm sorry about the chase, Bertie, said Edward. My fault, replied Bertie. Today there was a surprise waiting for Edward in the yard. It was a traction engine. Hello, said Edward. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing here? I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, polish and oil to be as good as new. But my master says I'm old fashioned. Edward snorted. People say I'm old fashioned, but I don't care. The fat controller says I'm a useful engine. What work did you do? My master would send us from farm to farm. We threshed corn, hauled logs, and did lots of other work. The children loved to see us. Trevor shut his eyes, remembering. Oh, yes, I like children. Edward set off for the station. Broken up, what a shame. Broken up, what a shame. I must help Trevor, I must. He thought of all his friends who liked engines. But strangely, none of them would have room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame, he hissed. Then, beep, beep, why didn't I think of him before? There, on the platform, was the very person. Hello, Edward. You look upset. What's the matter, Charlie? He asked the driver. There's a traction engine in the scrapyard, Vicar. He'll be broken up next week. Jem Cole says he never drove a better engine. Do save him, sir. He saws wood and gives children rides. We'll see, replied the Vicar. Jem Cole came on Saturday. The Reverend's coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. <sighs> Do you think he will, asked Trevor, hopefully. He will when I've lit your fire and cleaned you up. The vicar and his two boys arrived that evening. Trevor hadn't felt so happy for months. He chuffered about the yard. Show your paces, Trevor, said the vicar. Later, he came out of the office smiling. I've got him cheap, Jem, cheap. Do you hear that, Trevor? cried Jem. The Reverend saved you and you live at the vicarage now. Peep, peep, whistled Trevor. Now Trevor's home is in the vicarage orchard and he sees Edward every day. One morning, Percy was careless. I say, you engines, I'm to take some trucks to Thomas's junction. The fat controller chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely he wants you out the way, grunted James. Gordon looked across to James. They were making a plan. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals. But then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. 
Percy fell flattered. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He came to a signal. Bother, it's at danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. Down means go and up means stop. So up as still must mean go back. I know it's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. Gordon saw everything. That night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabel told him how well Duck had managed. Thomas was so pleased to be home that he soon forgot to be jealous. The works had left Thomas's handbrake very stiff. It made his brakes seem as if they were hard on, when in fact they were not. As a result, he and his coaches often overran the platform. Thomas found this most embarrassing. Gradually, his driver and fireman learned to be extra careful. But one day, Thomas's fireman was ill, and a relief man took his place. The fireman had fastened the coupling and joined the driver and station master on the platform to wait for Henry's passengers. The fireman had forgotten all about Thomas's handbrake. Thomas simmered happily. Not long now, he thought, as he saw Henry slowly approaching. But Thomas's brakes were not hard on, and suddenly he felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't without his driver and fireman. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The guard, driver, fireman, and passengers were all stranded on the platform. Stop, stop, shrieked Danny and Clarabel. Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The alarm went out down the line. Stop the runaway! There, ready for action, was Harold the helicopter. The inspector had made a plan, and together they took off into the sky. Last, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop, I need to stop, he panted wearily. As they neared the next station, Thomas saw Harold land. They entered the platform slowly enough for the inspector to act. Judging his moment, the inspector scrambled into the cab and screwed the brake hard on. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Thanks. 
Thomas was looking at a board on the quay. Danger! We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Why? Danger means falling down something, said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. I can't see a mine, said Percy. He didn't know that the foundations of the quay had sunk. The rails now sloped downward to the sea. Stupid board, said Percy. Percy made a plan. One day he whispered to the trucks, will you give me a bump when we get to the quay? The trucks had never been asked to bump an engine before. They giggled and chatted about it. Driver doesn't know my plan, chuckled Percy. On, 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 laughed the trucks. Percy thought they were helping. I'll pretend to stop at the station, but the trucks will push me past the board. Then I'll make them stop. I can do that whenever I like. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks. Go on, go on, they yelled, and bumped Percy's driver and fireman off the footplate. Oh, said Percy, sliding past the board. Percy was frantic. That's enough. Percy was sunk. You are a very disobedient engine. Percy knew that voice. Please, sir, get me out, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. No, Percy, we cannot do that till high tide. I hope it will teach you to obey orders. Yes, sir. It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. Next day, he was sent to the works on Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No, I am surprised. You need more determination, Percy. Water's nothing to an engine with determination, you know. Perhaps you will like it better next time. Percy is quite determined that there won't be a next time. The silly engines were flattered. He has very good manners, they murmured. We are pleased to have him in our yard. Duck had his doubts. Come on, he said. Diesel purred after him. Your worthy fat, Sir Topham Hat to you, ordered Duck. Diesel looked hurt. Your worthy Sir Topham Hat thinks I need to learn. He is mistaken. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We come to a yard and improve it. We are revolutionary. Oh, said Duck, if you're Revo Thinger Gummy, Perhaps you would collect my trucks while I fetch Gordon's coaches. Diesel delighted to show off, purred away. When Duck returned, Diesel was trying to take some trucks from a siding. They were old and empty. They had not been touched for a long time. Diesel found them hard to move. Pull, push, backwards, forwards. Oh, oh. The trucks groaned. We can't. We won't. Duck watched with interest. Diesel lost patience. Grr, grr. He roared. Gave a great heave. Trucks get forward. Oh, oh. They screamed. We can't. We won't. Some of their brakes snapped and the gear jammed in the sleepers. Grr, grr. Oh. <laughs> Chuckled Duck. Diesel recovered and tried to push the trucks back, but they wouldn't move. Duck ran quietly round to collect the other trucks. Thank you for arranging these, Diesel. I must go now. Don't you want this lot? No, thank you. Diesel gulped. And I've taken all this trouble. Why didn't you tell me? You never asked me. Besides, said Duck, 
You were having such fun being Rev whatever it was you said. Goodbye. <laughs> Diesel had to help the workmen clear the mess. He hated it. All the trucks were laughing and singing at him. Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with diesel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about, like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, up goes the diesel. <laughs> Growled diesel and scuttled away to sulk in the shed. He was going to tell lies about Duck. Next day, he spoke to the trucks. I see you like jokes. You made a good joke about me yesterday. I laughed and laughed. Duck told me one about Gordon. I'll whisper it. Don't tell Gordon I told you. And he sniggered away. Oh, ho, ho, guffered the trucks. Gordon will be cross with Duck when he knows. Let's tell him and pay Duck out for bumping us. They laughed rudely at the engines as they went by. Soon Gordon, Henry and James found out why. Disgraceful, said Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, said Henry. We cannot allow it. They consulted together. Yes, they said. He did it to us. We'll do it to him and see how he likes it. Duck was tired out. The trucks had been cheeky and troublesome. He wanted a rest in the shed. Three engines barred his way. Hoosh! Keep out! Stop fooling, said Duck. I'm tired. So are we, hissed the engines. We are tired of you. We like Diesel. We don't like you. You tell tales about us to the trucks. I don't. You do. I don't. You do. The fat controller came to stop the noise. Duck called me a galloping sausage, spluttered Gordon. Rusty red scrap iron, hissed James. I'm old square wheels, fumed Henry. Well, Duck, Duck considered. I only wish, sir, he said gravely, that I'd thought of those names myself, if the dome fits. <coughs> he made trucks laugh at us, accused the engines. The fat controller recovered. He'd been trying not to laugh himself. Did you, Duck? Certainly not, sir. No steam engine would be as mean as that. Diesel lurked up. Now, Diesel, you heard what Duck said. I can't understand it, sir, to think that Duck of all engines. I am dreadfully grieved, sir, but know nothing. I see, said the fat controller. Diesel squirmed and hoped he didn't. I'm sorry, Duck, but you must go to Edward's station for a while. I know he will be glad to see you. As you wish, sir. Duck trundled sadly away, while Diesel smirked with triumph. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. Suddenly, it was a guard's warning whistle. Hurrah, 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 laughed the trucks. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, Duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edward's station, but the trucks were catching up as fast as we can. Then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. 
games was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. Excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber. You frightened my customers. I'll teach you. And he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. Thomas was helping to pull the trucks away when the fat controller arrived. <laughs> I do not like engines popping through my walls, fumed the barber. I appreciate your feelings, said the fat controller, but you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. It was a very close, um, shave. Oh, said the barber. Oh, excuse me. He filled a basin of water to wash Duck's face. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were being a brave engine. That's all right, sir. I didn't know that either. You were very brave indeed, said the Fat Controller. I'm proud of you. The Fat Controller watched the rescue operation. Then he had more news for Duck. And when you are properly washed and mended, you are coming home. Home, sir? Do you mean the yard? Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. The engines are sorry and want you back. 